Uh, our final witness is Mr. Amory Lovins, uh, who is Chairman and Chief Scientist of the Rocky Mountain Institute and Chairman Emeritus of Fiberforge Incorporated. Mr. Lovins has published 29 books and hundreds of papers and advises governments and major firms worldwide on advanced energy and resource efficiency. We are honored to have you with us here today. Mr. Lovins, whenever you are ready, please begin. Ah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, distinguished committee members. I appreciate this opportunity to share with the committee some recent analysis of whether we need nuclear power, especially to protect the climate, and I request that my written uh, submission be included in the record. Without objection, so would. Thank you. I'll summarize why nuclear power is not needed for any civilian purpose, how and why it's being dramatically outcompeted in the global marketplace by no carbon and low carbon electrical resources that deliver far more climate solution per dollar far faster, and why nuclear expansion would inhibit climate protection, energy security, and reliably powering prosperity. Even if nuclear power could attract private risk capital, it could not, in principle, deliver its claimed climate and security benefits. But because it's uneconomic and unnecessary, we needn't inquire into its other attributes. Far from undergoing a renaissance, nuclear power is conspicuously failing in the marketplace for the same forgotten reason it failed previously. It costs too much and it bears too much financial risk to attract private risk capital despite federal subsidies now approaching or exceeding its total cost. What is beating nuclear power and other central thermal plants? <clears throat> Micropower, that is cogeneration plus distributed renewables, now produces a sixth of the world's total electricity, more than nuclear, at least a third of the world's new electricity, and from a sixth to over half of all electricity in a dozen industrial countries, the U.S. lags with about 4 percent. Megawatts, electricity saved by using it more efficiently or timely, are about as big worldwide as micropower and cost even less. In 2006, nuclear power added less capacity than photovoltaics added, one-tenth what wind power added, and 30 to 41 times less than micropower added. Its output growth was one-sixth of micropowers. Distributed renewables won $56 billion of private risk capital. Nuclear, as usual, got zero. Only central planters buy it. China's distributed renewable capacity reached seven times its nuclear capacity and are growing seven times faster. Micropower has such huge potential that just the full economic use of electric efficiency, zero carbon waste heat cogeneration, and wind power with no other renewables could provide roughly 13 to 15 times nuclear power's current share of U.S. electric generation without significant land use, reliability, or other constraints at much lower cost and with millions of good new jobs. Distributed generators are generally more dependable than centralized ones because their many small units won't all fail at once and can bypass the grid where nearly all power failures originate. Variable renewable resources, sun and wind, even in large amounts, need less backup than we've already bought and built to manage the intermittence of big thermal plants, especially nuclear plants, many of which can fail simultaneously, unpredictably, and for long periods. The Nuclear Energy Institute says 78 percent of the new coal plants announced in the past couple of years got canceled. I expect announced nuclear projects to do worse because they cost more. They've attracted no private risk capital despite U.S. taxpayer subsidies that can now total about $13 billion per new nuclear plant, roughly its entire cost, which exceeds the market cap of any U.S. utility save one. The smart money led by Warren Buffett is now heading for the exit, spooked by steeply rising nuclear costs, disappointments in the flagship finish project, competition by ever cheaper micropower megawatts, and the credit crunch. The U.S. can have only about as many new nuclear plants as taxpayers are forced to buy. Heroic efforts at near or over 100 percent subsidization will continue to elicit the same response as defibrillating a corpse. It will jump, but it won't revive. But that's good for climate protection, because nuclear power is so expensive 
that it buys roughly one and a half to 11 or more times less carbon reduction per dollar than competing no carbon technologies or even fossil fueled cogeneration in factories and buildings. As the graph in my pre-filed testimonies Annex E explains, or the graphs explain, I should say, uh, <clears throat> nuclear plants cost so much more than competing climate solutions that spending a dollar on nuclear instead of on efficient end use worsens global warming more than spending the same dollar on new coal power. It's therefore time to get on with judicious investments that yield the most energy services and the most climate protection per dollar and per year. The straightest path to American energy security and to a richer, fairer, cooler, and safer world is to let all ways to save or produce energy compete fairly at honest prices, regardless of their type, technology, size, location, and ownership. That's pretty much the opposite of the federal energy policy we have. Thank you, sir.